Hello and welcome to the second part of the Magic Bridge tutorial. Now we are ready to bring this into Game Engine, so there are multiple ways of doing this. So first of all, let's place another tier and then I will explain the two ways. For example, there are more of them. Um, so here we're just going to call this uh, out uh, simulation. So out simulation. Then what we want to do is we're going to either switch to the uh, output layer or what we can do is we can also build a ROP a network here. This is then for exporting uh, the simulation and we can just jump in there. Now in here what we want to do is if you want to use bones we are going to use something which is called um, the rigid body to FBX. So it will just here capture the simulation uh, like we have here and uh, it will actually use a bone for each point that we have. So that's again why it's important that I actually did the assembling nodes because I know that I will use 200 bones or 212 bones for this one single animation. So if that's something that is not really for your project, then we can use something else, which is then called the vertex uh, animation. So these are two ways of both, again, exporting uh, your uh, animation. So this doesn't work on this doesn't work on bones. This just purely works on shaders and uh, textures. So for both cases, what we will have to do is we have to say what node to export. So here we're gonna have to click on the icon and we're gonna have to say that I would like to have the output simulation node. Now it immediately gives us a warning, and there is a reason why this is because it's missing orient and back data. So we're gonna have to go back to our boot solver. We're going to have to go to advanced outputs and here we will have to say to include uh, or orient and our pivot data because this is needed to calculate the texture. So now that it's done, you will see it will be gone. Uh, make sure this is set to rigid body and we're also going to say that we don't have any cache data because, because we didn't use any file caching and so on. Then we're going to go to export. We're going to give this a name. Let's call this tutorial um, bridge. So when this is done, uh, I'm just going to basically click render. Now I'm going to go to Unreal and make sure everything is installed there as well. So you can go to real time shaders and you can here look up the documentation and plugins. So click this button if you need uh, if you need to install this. So now in Unreal, I have my magic bridge and I can just drag and drop this in here and it will then ask us to import the model. And you can have the same settings as me here. So don't build nanites, uh, disable most of these and make sure to import uh, normals and tangents and then click import. And then you will basically have this. So we're going to basically only use these three. So we have our model and our textures. On our textures, we will also need to set a certain data. So we're going to set the group here to uh, uh, 16 bits. And we're also going to here set this to nearest. So make sure these two are done. And we're going to do the same for the other texture and nearest. So we now have these two textures with data. So this is what, how vertex animation looks like. If you also look closer at the resolution, this is 212 by 212 by 120. So this is the amount of pieces multiplied by the amount of frames that I had. So that's basically how you can control uh, this texture, but if you want to keep it on the lower side. Now let's here go and uh, place our bridge in the scene. So I'm going to disable snapping here for a moment. This is then my bridge. Then what I'm going to do is we need to have a vertex animation shader. So I'm going to right click, make material. So this can be, for example, vertex animation with the bridge. I'm going to open this. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to search for our vertex animation uh, dynamics here. So again, this is something that you can install. Uh, if you don't have this installed, I can recommend you checking out some other videos. Then we're going to plug in some of the options here. So we have our world position offset. And then we can also here have the custom UV channels. Um, so here, if we go to custom UVs, we want to add five of them. And we have one, two, three, and four. And let's press save. Uh, you can also here, you can also connect to normal if you want to, but let's just test it out already. 
So we're going to create an instance of this. We can open the instance. We, of course, have to override here our textures. So here, we're going to have to bring in our position and our rotation and click Save. What is also important is that we actually need to set Houdini FPS, which is for us plus 24. And let's click Save again. So now we are ready to here drag and drop the material on this. And as you can see, it works. So now it's sort of like automatically playing and we can force uh, the automatic play in here. So as you can see, now it doesn't start the automatic play. So it doesn't automatically play anymore. We can further play around with our shader. Uh, if we are going here, we can bring in our textures. So here are my textures. And we're just going to plug it in like we would normally would. So we have the color. We have our normal. Um, and then we have here our roughness. And click save. Then we have here our bridge like it is over there. You might want to sometimes play around here with the settings of uh, recalculating normals. Let's see if that does anything. So that might sometimes uh, help out. So next step is I want to actually now trigger this on a certain gameplay element or when something happens. So when I press, for example, the simulate button, it actually needs to start firing. So what we're going to do is we're going to just now make a blueprint. So we're going to actor. So I'm going to call this BP uh, magic bridge or something like that. Then in here, what we want to do is uh, we want to just drag and drop our magic bridge. And we want to, of course, make sure the material is assigned on this. So we have our magic bridge. And what we want to do now is we want to go to our events graph. And here we are just going to use begin play. So you can also, of course, uh, create a custom event and so on. But what we will do is we will just use uh, begin play. So if you have experience with blueprints, you basically know exactly what to do. So we're going to use a timeline. And we're going to, this is going to use for the uh, animation uh, of the bridge. And we're going to just say play from start. So every time our game plays, we will automatically trigger the animation of the bridge. Now in our timeline, we can double click on this. We will make a new track and I'm going to make the track only one second. So here we're going to have one second and we're going to say, uh, make a float track. We're going to add two points, uh, one from the beginning and one for the end. So we're going to start um, at zero and we're going to go to one. Uh, and if and if you remember, we actually need to inverse our line. So actually we're going to say that we're going to start from one and we're going to go to uh, zero over time. So this will actually inverse our time as well. So this is how I can control my animation with a curve. So I can add more points. I can, for example, select all the points and we can do an uh, auto smoothing. So we can actually smooth them out. You can add an, another point if you want to. And you can play around with this animation um, if you want that. So that's quite flexible here with that. So let's go back to our event graph here. And now we need to plug this value into our system. We can also did not give it a name. So for now that doesn't matter that much and what we're going to do here is maybe we can now set uh, the scalar uh, parameter of a material so here on update we want to set this value over there and what we want to do is we want to here uh, we want to override the display frame so i'm going to right click i'm just going to say copy the name and we're going to just here paste it like so and that's been set now, if we just drag and drop this in the scene, I'm going to delete my other one. This will now actually not fully work. So if I press play, you can see it's not fully working. So what is actually happening here is that we are actually, again, displaying the frame number. And if you remember from Houdini, we actually had 120 frames. So what we need to do is we need to bring in here a multiply. So we're going to say multiply this by the frame number, which is in this case was 120. Uh, you can, of course, make this into a parameter if you want to have a flexible blueprint. So I can say promote a parameter and I can say uh, frame numbers. 
in, in our case, which is 120. Now, this is going to work better, but it's not going to be perfect. So let's check it out at Press Simulate. And it will actually, as you can see, build our bridge super fast, but it still ends up in this weird uh, breakup. So what is actually happening here is if we go to our material, is that actually frame zero doesn't really exist. So we have to start from frame one, as you can see. So if I fill now here zero, we have this effect. So we actually always need to end up on frame one. So to make things very simple for us is I'm just going to say add one single frame or one single file, which is just one. And if we now save and test this out, you will now see our bridge being made and it will now stop at this exact frame. Now, if you know a bit more about blueprints, you can just say here that we want to destroy this object and we want to then spawn or create a, a normal static mesh instead of this vertex animation mesh, which is completely possible to swap these meshes. So now that is done, the only thing left is for me to figure out how can I slow down this timeline. So we can here grab our timeline, which is called animation bridge, and we're gonna get this and we're gonna just type in the rate. And here we can actually set the play rate. So we can here uh, play around with that. So we can say like so. And we can promote this value as well. So promote valuable. And we can then say uh, play speed or playback speed or something. Um, so play speed. And this can be an instance editable. So we can uh, instances. So we can edit this outside. Let's say that we start with a 0.5. So let's go for that. Um, and then and let's see if that now is a bit slower. As you can see, it's now a bit slower. What is also very cool to do is in our material, we can actually enable here interpolation frames. So let's enable this. And this will actually make sure if you are slowing down the simulation a lot, it will actually still smooth out and blend everything together. So even though if I would now go to this blueprint and I would say, something very slow, um, like the zero 0.5, let's, let's play, it will still, as you can see, have like a quite smooth animation. Like it's not really uh, lagging or something, it will just have this smooth still animation of that bridge being built. So of course, like this is maybe too slow, um, but you can see where we are going into. So let's maybe set this to 0.2 and press play. Yeah, I think this is better. Something like that. So now I'm ready actually to delete my original bridge or we can just here put it aside. And in my case, this will probably be at zero. And if I now here put press play, we will now have this animation. And that is done. So again, if you have uh, more knowledge about blueprints, you can do something else. You can also, for example, say that we need to trigger this when we click a certain key or something like that. That's also definitely possible. Or if someone has a collision box, then we trigger this effect on a collision box. So you can just swap out this event with, uh, with another event. Uh, and then we just like have that uh, animation being triggered there. So it should, so should do the full workflow of taking something from Unreal, just destroying it, making some interesting effects and, and simulation and bringing this then into Game Engine and triggering this with the blueprint. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.